All right, this is the beginning of our third lesson for Fresh Faith, and we're going to begin to talk about God. So in our first two lessons, we talked about the Bible. We introduced the Bible, and we talked about um, how to begin to read the Bible, and now we're going to talk about God himself. Um, this is going to be a tougher concept for us because we're talking about God, right? If we were talking about a flower, um, that would be one thing, which flowers are actually pretty complicated, but we're talking about God. And so what I want you to do is just sort of take a deep breath. And um, because this, again, th this class can be, dis it can be discouraging when you say, well, I came to the basics class and I didn't get it. Um, and for some of you, that's gonna be your experience. That is okay. That is okay. Do not get discouraged. Right now, we're gonna learn about God, and so it's gonna be hard. Like, it's hard for you, it's hard for me, it's hard for any of us because God is so much bigger than we can conceptualize, okay? We don't understand God, but we can know Him. And so when we talk about these things, don't get discouraged, um, but it is so vital because what we think about God and, and believe about God actually spills out into the way that we live. And sometimes we don't even see that connection. Um, but we're going to talk about God. Uh, we're going to talk about first, the probably the toughest topic, which is the Trinity. Um, and the Trinity is a, uh, it's a, it's, it's one of those things that sets Christianity apart from other religions. It's one of those things that doesn't really make sense and quite frankly is difficult for me to explain because it's not really a human concept. It doesn't fit in our normal way of thinking. Um, every time I've tried to explain this, people usually respond with, I don't get it, to which I usually respond with, I know, me neither. Um, it's not, it's not, it doesn't mean that it doesn't, let me put it this way, it doesn't make sense, that doesn't mean it's false, okay? It doesn't make sense, that means that it's bigger than we can conceptualize different from what we're used to. So God is, is, is different from us. And so when we talk about the Trinity, um, the Trinity in the Bible is a, is a teaching, but not a word in the Bible. So the Bible doesn't ever use the word Trinity, but the Bible teaches the concept of the Trinity. It teaches the concept through what in the last couple lessons we talked about is a network of truth. So this truth plus this truth plus this truth, if I put those together, what do I get? That's how the Bible works with many, many things. Um, not just this, but this is a pretty good example. So when we talk about the Trinity, um, the Bible tells us that God is the Father. Okay, God the Father, right, check. Okay, God the Father. We're calling God the Father. All right, Bible, I'm with you. Then the Bible will talk about God the Son, the Son of God. You're like, all right, Bible, but didn't you just say that God is the Father, and now you're saying God is the Son? The Bible's like, yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay Bible, I don't, I don't know if I get it, but okay. And the Bible say, you know what? There's God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. You're like, all right, Bible, so there's three gods. The Bible says, no, no. God is God the Father. God is God the Son. God is God the Holy Spirit. Oh, and by the way, all of them are one being. And you're like, Bible, I'm getting rid of you. This is ridiculous. This is crazy. I don't, let's just go back to the, the battles in the Old Testament. Those seem fun. I don't get this. The Bible teaches us that our God is one God, <clears throat> but that one God is a relationship of three, we say persons, not three people. You and I are people, but God is a person. Why a person? God has will, God has emotion, God has rationality, God has relationship, God is a person. He's not a people like me and you, but he's still a person and a personal being. God is one God with three of these persons. He's one being with three persons in relationship in that one being. And you're going, throw away my computer, throw away my phone, get out of this class, quit fresh faith, I'm done, I made it to lesson three, that feels pretty good, I'm out. Okay, don't do that, don't quit. Um, this is the single most difficult concept, I believe, in the entire Bible, because it just doesn't make sense in our thinking, but it's what the Bible expresses. Remember when we talked about, in lesson one, the Bible's revelation, it's God revealing to us truth that we wouldn't have got to on our own. 
um, you know, it's been said that uh, if, a, if a baby was inside its mother's womb, it's in the world, but it cannot conceptualize anything other than what it sees here, right? Or doesn't see, I guess, but it can only conceptualize what it's used to. And so in nine months time, that baby is born into the world and had no idea there was so much more going on and had no idea of any of these things and still doesn't understand them. And so with us, when we encounter God, um, God is so much bigger than our thinking, our ways of thinking, our structures of thinking that we're like, gosh, that, that doesn't make sense. And God kind of says, yeah, I know it's because you, you cannot understand me, but you can know me. You cannot understand God, but we can know God. Uh, that's going to kind of be our, our saying for this, this lesson. We cannot understand God, but we can know God. Um, so God is three persons. Each of those persons is fully God. One is not more God than the other. Uh, they're all God. And there is one God. God is three persons. Each person is fully God. There is one God. Don't quit. <laughs> don't quit on me. Don't turn your, don't turn your thing off. Um, so each are distinct and different, but they're all unified. So each distinct and different, but unified. Well, what does that show us? That shows us some of, some of the nature of God, that one, God is beyond human understanding. By the way, we would not have made this up. We would not have made up a religion that has something so difficult to explain that we have to admit that we don't really understand. We never would have made that up, okay? This is not a man-made thing. There's a reason no other, no other religion has this same teaching. There's a slightly similar teaching uh, in Hinduism, but it's not the same. Um, but we wouldn't have come to this on our own uh, because God is, it's, it's, it's discovering truth about God that he revealed in his word that doesn't make sense to us because our minds are human only. Um, God is one in nature, but different in roles. So God is God, God is God, but those persons have different roles. The father acts with authority. The son reveals God to us as people. Um, interacts with us as people, obeys the Father, the Holy Spirit moves in us and, and glorifies, moves us to glorify um, God, and so different, different roles. Um, and God is one whose nature calls us to unity and diversity. How come we have a church that has a bunch of different cultures and a bunch of different personalities and people and gifts and experiences and just so different but we are unified as one because that's the nature of God. God is different, unified, and one, 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 one relationship. Um, God is relational at his very core. Why are you and I so relational? Why are we built to need others and love others? Why are we built to know that we need a relationship with God? Because God is relational. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in relationship with one another. And so we are made relational as well. Um, and we have a God who glorifies God. So if you, if you, if you were to take like all the, all the stuff in the Bible, the, the, uh, about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how they relate, this is maybe sounds stupid, but I kind of picture it as like gentlemen going like, no, you first, sir, no, you first, sir, no, sir, you first, no, sir, you first, you first, sir, no, sir, you, sir, no, sir, you, sir, you, sir, no, sir, you, sir. Always putting, you know, the, the honor and the glory on, on, on the other, and so we see God the Father glorify God the Son. We see God the Son glorify God the Father. We see the Holy Spirit glorify both of them. Um, and so God glorifies God. Why is that important? Because the Bible reveals that that is God's purpose in the world, is to glorify himself through relationship. God's nature is a relationship that glorifies God God's purpose in the world is to have people who have relationship with him that will glorify him. Tough concept, the Trinity. We're now going to go and talk about each, each person in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, uh, how we relate to them. But the Trinity tells us in the Bible, there are three persons. Each person is God, but they together are one God, one God. Um, hard concept, uh, but God is greater than we understand. But again, we don't comprehend him, but what? We know him, but we know him.